The number one team in the nation moves to 8-0 with a win over Memphis. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slasher U. I'm your host, Christian Rao, here with my co-host, Steve Feck. And we're going to break down South Carolina defeating Memphis 79-54. to And Steve, it wouldn't be a start to this conversation for us talking about South Carolina if we didn't talk about, one, the double-doubles from South Carolina. We got two of them in this aspect, so congrats on the double-double alert by Aliyah Boston and Cardoso. I love seeing one from the bench, by the way. And then we always got to talk about how many minutes did Aliyah Boston play? Well, she got 21 minutes in this one. Not enough in my book. I always like seeing her get more minutes, but 21 minutes, 14 points, 10 rebounds. At least, I would say at least 10 minutes, not enough. I know they didn't need it, but I always love seeing her play more basketball. Soon. Yeah, but, you know, Don Staley needs to – see exactly what she has coming off her bench. I think she has a good idea from obviously recruiting them and watching them in practice, but seeing them in game situations, how they react, you know, to uh, not that they have a lot of adversity in, in women Gamecock uh, <laughs> basketball games, right, yeah. but, but still to see how they react when things aren't going quite the way that they want to. The biggest takeaway for me in this game, and I was reading a bunch of different articles about it, was you know Dawn Staley had had a conversation with Cardoso saying, we don't think that you're you, you should be dominant at your size, six foot seven. You should be more dominant than you are, and we need you to be dominant. And I think the last two games, she has responded to that challenge, and she has yeah. shown how dominant she can be. Last three games, last three games. I mean, she's had a double double oh, against true. Hampton. She had right. the, should have had a double double against. UCLA just missed it by one, and then this one against Memphis. No, I agree. Continue, but yeah, three games. Yeah, no, I, I forgot about. I actually, I forgot about the Hampton game. But yeah, but I mean, so for me, that was a huge takeaway. Now, the more she asserts herself, the less attention they can afford to pay to Boston. Boston's going to find you know her points. Sure. You know, she's going to find a way to score. She's going to find a way to rebound. She's going to find a way to distribute the ball, no matter how many people you put on her. But basically, now you have to be more honest, you know, as you know, when, when you're playing her, because now you inside in the paint, you have another legitimate option. The other thing I found really interesting is that Don Staley seems to be rotating her guards based on who they're playing each matchup. And I really hadn't noticed it. But somebody had mentioned that in one of the comments uh, about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to pay more attention to that. It is true. I mean, she seems to utilize different sets of guards depending on the opponent. And that's where some of the minutes are being distributed in the backcourt. Another great thing to think of as you go ahead in, into conference play and then certainly down into March, if you can have – consistent guard play even when you have to rest someone or if someone gets in foul trouble guard play guard play guard play that's right that's good that's going to win you a championship we just talked about on another segment about UConn having issues with their depth and only playing six seven players the number one team in the country against Memphis just played 13 players in this game and this that's that shows to me the difference in the level of this uh, how they're firing at all cylinders. The fact that mm -hmm. obviously you're now South Carolina wasn't playing number seven Notre Dame, so let's just keep that in mind. But regardless, they're finding ways to get thirteen players out into this game. Now twelve of them really got significant minutes. Thompson only got three minutes. Everybody else was in double digits in minutes. Twelve of their players played double digit minutes in this one. Now that proves why Aaliyah Boston only got on 21 minutes still found a way to get a double double i feel like that's like the the check in the box them like let's get boston or double double then double and then boom, yeah yeah she can get her hot tea and uh, a compress right after that so um no i i really like what south carolina is doing with this aspect they're finding a way to get everybody as much playing time as they possibly can because even though these games are important to hold that number one spot to get that undefeated moving forward a nice rebounding game after the the struggles somewhat during ucla those are important, but also getting everybody else that playing time yes. before they hit conference play, before they get into March, so you know exactly what you got. Don Staley is doing a fantastic job doing that, and we're seeing that perfectly to start off the month of December, Steve. Yeah, you know, Don Staley this year, uh, I think not only is she doing her best coaching job, I think it's some of the best in-game coaching 
that we've seen since Pat Summit's, Summit's heydays. I mean, I really think that, I mean, Dawn Staley is etching her profile in the Mount Rushmore of women's college basketball coaches. I love it. I love and it. She, and she may be very, very soon the prominent profile. You know, I, I mean, so that is often overlooked, I think. I think and even we sometimes focus a little bit too much not too much on the players, but because they're playing the game. True. But sometimes we, o- yeah, some, we overlook some really amazing jobs from the bench. And I'm using that as the segue. When I was watching Memphis, their coach, Katrina Merriweather, I think it's Merrifield, or it's either Merrifield or Merriweather. It's Merriweather. It's, it's, it's Merriweather. She's a program builder. Mm-hmm. She took right state from an also ran to a, to a tournament team in a pretty short period of time. And that's when Memphis offered her the job. Um, I liked a lot of what I saw from this Memphis team. I mean, I don't think they're a tournament team, but I mean, certainly you can see there were a lot of young players on this roster. They got a lot of time. Certainly the scoring was pretty evenly distributed. I think they tried to keep, rotating players in to try to just keep fresh legs to try to keep up with mm-hmm. a team like South Carolina. Cause I mean, they were, they were obviously outgunned, you know, it's, it, and it's not their fault. I mean, South Carolina is just that good. Right. Yeah. You know, but you know, they had a nice little guard, uh, Amani Jefferson. She's only five, six, but she is fearless like driving the lane. You know, she actually led the team in rebounds. She's a five, six guard, but she led the team on rebound. Again, mainly offensive rebounds, but again, Impressive. She, put, she puts her nose in there. Memphis is starting to build that foundation. So pretty soon we're going to be talking about the Memphis women with the same kind of reverence we talk about with the Memphis men's squad. I mean, I Love really think I really think it's not that far away. I think another season or two of some solid recruiting classes. And I think uh, Meriwether is going to have a tournament team on our hands here at Memphis. I love to hear that. And I always love hearing short people getting leading their team in rebounds. It's the reward. <laughs> it's, it's getting the reward for following your shot. I love that as a fellow short person. I love that myself. So awesome for South Carolina, the road for 13 and O to finish the year of 2022 continues. They face Liberty, uh, a losing record. The only winning record team they face for the next month of December is South Dakota state who is just over 500 at five and four, but this is a team who was ranked in the top 25 at the beginning of the, of the preseason. This is still a tough team. They're just going through a rough patch. So just keep that one in mind. But the rest of this, the, uh, the rest of the team so far uh, in the month of December are pretty low. I'm assuming that we're going to see more of those 12, 13 player rotations for South Carolina. This is the moment to do it because once they hit mm-hmm. January, that's when you got your teams like Georgia, like Auburn, like Mississippi state, they're going to get into conference play. Um, so this is the time December, this stretch right here, see what you got, get that rotation, see who works with everybody, see who flows with who get those right guards, get those, the, those two guards, those three guards, if you will, um, the second and third line, if you need to, because that's what it seems like they have, which is amazing for a number one team like this to have all this depth and, and, um, just amazing play and, and get ready for January. We're going to keep you posted here on South Carolina and their play all throughout the year um, with here at Slasher U. But let us know in the comments your thoughts about this game against Memphis and your thoughts. Do you think they can get to 13 and 0 and finish the year off undefeated before they head into SCC play? Let us know in the comments below. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching Slasher U.